Yes, so we're going to move on to something very, very different, which is a remake, Scott. Although, to be honest, not enough hammers for my liking. Hmm. Needs more hammers. <laughs> yes, uh, we're talking about Old Boy, um, where after his latest bender, obnoxious alcoholic executive, Joe Doucette, uh, Josh Brolin, awakes to find himself imprisoned in what appears to be a hotel room with no idea why. His only companion is a TV that informs him he's wanted for the murder of his wife. Who is behind all of this? That will be something that he'll try to figure out over the 20 years he ultimately spends there, a purpose that eventually gives him drive to pre- prepare himself mentally and physically for the storm that will follow. Awaking in a box in the middle of a field, just as mysteriously as his kidnapping, Joe follows some breadcrumbs and hunches, aided by his old friend Chucky, Michael Imperioli, and a new acquaintance, a kindly but damaged nurse, Marie, uh, played by Elizabeth Olsen, uh, with the man responsible for Joe's troubles, the stranger, Shalto Copley, soon giving Joe an ultimatum. Determine his identity in 46 hours and be rewarded with evidence to clear his name, money and the continued life of his kidnapped author. Should he fail, he gets none of that. And so it goes, with an investigation in the mould of classic private investigator Mike Hammer. Sorry, I misread that. An investigation that remoulds people with a hammer. Uh, yes, there's, there's a fair amount of violence as this plot is unveiled, the details of which I shall gloss over in case you have, against all logic and reason, not watched this, or more correctly, Park Chan Wook's 2003 film that this is a remake of, or reinterpretation, as Lee would have it, but, well, it's a remake. <laughs> not a shot for shot remake, but the bones of it are much the same between the two, and, well, the biggest problem when talking about this old boy is not to just talk about the original old boy, which, as is often the case with these things, is better, did it first, which makes it harder to build much of a case for Lee's version. Uh, let's attempt it, anyway. It's hard for me to judge the uh, judge what any impact of Lee's small narrative modifications would have to the first time viewer, but the original was a highly compelling piece of work, and I Pretty sure this would be too, for anyone that's not uh, familiar with it. I've seen the original film at least three times, and this version once before, so I'm perhaps past the point of diminishing returns of re-watching, uh, but even so, this still held up quite well for me. Josh Brolin also is excellent, Elizabeth Olsen is pretty good, and Charlotte Copley is Charlotte Copley. The action sequences are as kinetic and crunchy as the original, and Lee's produced as slick a big studio outing as Inside Man albeit one that that cratered at the box office, which it didn't really deserve, but I suppose the nature of a film like this is likely to appeal mainly to people who'd been watching the original for a decade. So the audience value proposition, as it tends to be for remakes, was questionable. I still rather enjoyed revisiting it, but crucially, I'd still rather have revisited the original, and in the context of these episodes, there's not an awful lot of Spike Lee manifested in the studio's final cut. From a Spike Lee film context, the most interesting thing about this is simply that it exists. Um, ma- making it seems a choice a bit out of character for him, and the results mm. do not show the same character as his other work. It, an enjoyable enough footnote in his output, but one that raises more questions than it answers. Yeah, by itself, perfectly fine film. As a Spike Lee film, yeah, not so sure. Um, it has a lot of uh, merit in, in that distinction. He, he's not put much of his imprint on it, perhaps, other than the kind of slickness. But um, we've seen him do big studios before with Inside Man and the 25th Hour to an extent where he's kind of managed to kind of mesh his style and his politics and his worldview much better than happened in this, where it kind of really didn't happen. If this didn't say Spike Lee film on it, I'm not sure you'd know it was a Spike Lee film. Yeah, this is not a Spike Lee film. Yeah. <laughs> it's strange. When I threw it to you, Scott, I said that it has um, not a sufficient amount of hammer. Yes. Uh, it, it also has an unacceptable amount of Charlotte Copley. <laughs> which is more than zero, yes. <laughs> which is, uh, I'll, I'll largely accept his name. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, th- this may prove uh, confusing for younger viewers, but there was a time when Charlotte Copley was a thing. Uh, for some reason, <laughs> people thought he was good. And then everyone kind of overnight realised, hi on, he really isn't. And then he's more or less gone away. And that's that's a good thing. We should all be, I'll be happy for that. I, I do need to revisit District 9 at some point. Yeah. I, I think that that might still work, but I'm not sure. The only other time, honestly, I found him tolerable was Hardcore Henry. Yeah. He's quite fun in that. Yes. And everything else, he is appalling. Yes. I don't know what he's doing in this. I mean, it's not quite as so bad as Maleficent <laughs> with his butchering of a allegedly Scottish accent. I've read. I definitely didn't hear Scottish accent. I've read that that's what it was supposed to be. In this, with his strange 
for, he's an effete Englishman who's uh, somehow the fam, from a family of American business people who moved to Luxembourg. I'm not <laughs> following this accent choice at all. And he's terrible. And I mean, the film's not terrible, but honestly, it's verging that way. I just, I, I don't like this film. I don't, I don't see the point of it for one thing. I mean, yeah. You know what? I mean, as much as I complain about the reluctance of many people to watch films in a language not their own with subtitles, mm. um, and I really hate people say, oh, I came to watch a film not to read it. It's like, yep, you die in all the fires. But um, there, there is a, still a barrier of entry for that and I don't necessarily dislike that all people just a lot of people rather just will dismiss all of them mm. so there is some merit I mean, if you look at for instance The Departed yeah, the film is based on and the remake both very good films and I think there's enough of a twist on The Departed to make it substantially different from yeah. Infernal Affairs and it feels like a Martin Scorsese film Yeah, this as you said very rightly does not feel like a Spike Lee film and it's also, it's weird. There are some bits which are almost, not so much scene for scene, because it's not a scene for scene thing at all, but um, there are some shots which are very, very like the the original film. Yeah. Like, the, which are presumably there for the fact that they look just like the original film, or I'm guessing maybe the manga. I don't suppose you've read the manga, Scott? I have not, no. No, so I, I, it feels like they may actually be shots from the original manga rather than it being from the film. Mm-hmm. But like the scene of the imprisoned character grabbing the legs of somebody through the gap in the bottom of the cell door. Yeah. Or the very almost Streets of Rage-like side-on scene where he's fighting lots of people with the hammer and leaving the prison. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of those scenes which are very obviously so similar to the original that at least there's a nod to that or the manga. And then a lot of the changes don't make a lot of sense. Like, why was the the relationship of the the characters and the victims changed. Why was that a whole weird family? I mean, it's all very the architects. Yeah. <laughs> if you remember that slightly disturbing German film, Scott. Yes. And I don't understand why that changed. And it's like everything about this film is just kind of slightly less good. Mm-hmm. Oh, I watched Old Boy. Um, and we'll call this New Boy for lack of <laughs> confusion, okay? I watched Old Boy again the three days before I watched this. Mm. Because uh, I really wanted to give it a good comparison. Um, I, I can possibly watching two such similar films so close together is one of the reasons I didn't enjoy this so much. But it gave me a much better idea of just what was changed. And I don't really understand. Okay, the the hypnosis and post-hypnotic suggestion thing in Old Boy is well, it, it's daft. Yeah. Such things as films always yes. are. But... At least it sort of allowed them to explain how things happened, whereas in New Boy, it relies an awful lot on luck, which I hate more than weird science, <laughs> because so much could go wrong. Yeah. It's like, there, there's, in Old Boy, he is compelled to um, interact with Mido in the sushi bar the way he does, basically by the post-hypnotic suggestion of her to respond to him. In this one... If his friend had decided not to pick up that card or thrown it away or not noticed it, he'd have just called the paramedics. Yeah. There's no reason for him to stop. <laughs> yeah. And the whole film wouldn't happen after that point. And I hate films are based in coincidence like that. Yeah. So there are a few things like that. And like the the investigation seems to be like about 50% in New Boy, whereas in Old Boy, like you realise that he's been played for a lot of it through by the end. But he is investigating things and trying to find things out and in New Boy it kind of mostly just kind of happens Yeah, they don't do that much investigation so it's there are changes that don't make a lot of sense and and you add to that the fact that this is a Spike Lee film that is the least Spike Lee film I've ever seen I think and I don't see the point of this film at all yeah I mean, first off, I thought Weird Science was an all right John Hughes film. It's got a good theme tune, if nothing else. Um, but yeah, this, this film, apparently there's a... Yeah, the studios went and chopped about 40 minutes out of this, I think it was saying, compared to what Spike Lee had in mind. To be honest, I'm not sure if any of those 40 minutes would have really made it a much better film. Old Boy is not that old of, uh, long a film in the first instance, and it doesn't need to be uh, to tell its story. Um, I can't think what you'd be adding into New Boy that would actually 
make this any better. Certainly all the things that you have changed are less good than the original version. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I think I, I probably still like this a bit more Duded. Um, I, I didn't completely hate it, although perhaps a bit more distant from the last viewing of Old Boy, but I just can't possibly recommend watching this rather than watching Old Boy, the original. Um, I don't hate impression. it. It's too well enough made to hate it. Yeah. I just, I just don't like it. It's yeah. and mostly it's pointless. And there is, it's strange too. I think one of the most notably non Spike Lee things about it is the fact that there's no humor. Yeah. Old boy's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There's a lot of humor in old boy, even from the very beginning when he said, "I wondered if 15 years of boxing against myself could um, serve me against some like street punks." Basically, yeah, it can. And then just a few beats later, I wondered if 15 years of whatever, and it's like, oh, it couldn't. <laughs> and then just like the fact that the main character is just kind of slightly goofy looking. Yeah. And Josh Brolin can't do goofy. Yeah. <laughs> and. That's particularly weird because even in his really serious stuff, like I mean, look at Do the Right Thing, look at the end of Do the Right Thing after everything that happens. Yeah. It ends on funny. Yeah. Spike Lee is incredibly adept at putting humour into f- films that you wouldn't necessarily think would support it. And there's nothing in New Boy. Absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. It's so poor face and it's so strange to have come from that director. Yeah. I mean, I suppose. Uh, Look for positives. The one thing, one upside it has on Old Boy is the fact that the two characters who were supposed to have been at school together look like they could have been school together. <laughs> Whereas yeah. in the original, there's a 14 year of age difference between the actors. <laughs> yes. And it looks like about 24. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> and I have seen some, um, some theories that that's because he, because it's all based on like the story of Oedipus and other Greek things. Lee in Old Boy is supposed to be a representation of a Greek god and it doesn't age like no you're, you're really stretching <laughs> yes. now and in Spike Lee's new boy that's fixed like okay I don't know what's going on with his accent or his weirdly groomed face but um, Lee Shadow got and Josh Bond you can imagine they were <laughs> yes um, yeah. it's cool together but yeah okay and I struggle to justify pointless, but again, it's a it's a good story, and you're bringing it to a different audience who maybe just would not see something like a Korean film. Yeah, I just kind of wish it was better. Yes, and I wish yeah. it was a Spike Lee film. That's my biggest issue. I wanted to be a Spike Lee film, and it's not. It should have been at least eighty percent dolly shots, and then it would have been much better. But yeah, no, um, it, it, I just can't really justify this film's existence. If, if you came to me, there, there's nothing it really does much better than the original. The original is funnier and has better action and I think it was overall better acted it's just better um, so there is something to be said for widening up the audience to it but um, as the uh, box office impact shows it didn't work so <laughs> I think everyone that was interested in this had already seen the original and that's really the right call can't fault them for that logic <laughs> yes yeah, it's, it's honestly the tip is to watch old boy and then if you want to check out the Spike Lee version, just watch Old Boy again. Yes. You'll be much happier. 